Good morrow, my sweet strangers. I so desperately needed a vacation. Not many of you know, I have been fighting a very exhausting sickness since last October. It is February already, and it's only now I'm starting to finally feel better. So, when I learned my sister found a log cabin in the beautiful High Tatra Mountains for a week, I didn't think twice about joining her. A real curative stay in the mountains. Like in the old times. Sounds like an adventure. I dusted off one of my well-traveled suitcases, stuffed it more than full, and decided to take a cross-country train trip to Poprad. I was ready to go by myself, but my mom insisted on joining me in staring out the windows for six hours. And so, our adventure started. We had to change trains, but otherwise, the ride was pretty uneventful. So we spent most of the time solving crossword puzzles and reading. Until we got closer to the mountains. The window views got much more attractive and we couldn't stop admiring the dramatic skies and snow-covered landscape. My sister and her friend, who arrived a day earlier, were kind enough to pick us up in Poprad. And after stocking up on our food supplies in a local grocery store, we took a scenic drive toward the beautiful mountains. We tested the car's shock absorbers, passed through a few holes and cute little villages, and reached the cabin in the late afternoon. It was very charming and much larger than I imagined. The first floor, besides the hallway and bathroom, was a spacious open living space with a fully equipped kitchen, dining corner, and a big fireplace in the middle with a couple of comfy sofas and a big TV. Up the stairs were three bedrooms and a big bathroom and in the attic there were two more bedrooms. I picked the one on the second floor with the woods view and a warm afternoon sunlight, which pulled us out almost immediately, tempting us to explore the cabin grounds. We discovered a peculiar spoon collection mini-museum with little spoons from all around the world, right by a Nazi lounge chair swing with a mountain view. That is, if you were sitting in it the right direction, unlike me, and a glowing ball on the side. By the time we were done fooling around with the chair and studying the spoons, the sun was setting and it was time to return and rest. What a gorgeous day to wake up to. The sun was brightening the whole cabin and even though it was quite earlier than I usually get up, it was pulling me outside already. So I made a quick breakfast of fresh bread with butter, strawberry jam and white coffee and it was time to catch an early train to Štrbska Pleso. Let's go for a little trip. The train takes just a little over an hour to get there from where we are staying, but it was about 20 minute walk across the woods to the train station, so we barely made it on time. Conveniently, 
you can buy a ticket directly on the train with a credit card. And it's valid for a whole day, so you can hop on and off anywhere you want. The view from the mountain climbing train was stunning, full of old hotels and wild nature. But the higher we went, the more clouds there were. Fortunately, they didn't last. Unbelievably, by the time we were on our way to the chairlifts, it was already noon and the temperature was raising above freezing. And I was shocked by the crowd. It looked like a promenade. But then I realized it was the weekend. Everybody seems was trying to enjoy the last snow before it melted away. We were planning to take a lift up the mountain, but unfortunately, the wind was so high they didn't let us get on the chairlift today. Well, it was supposed to be a relaxing day anyway. So we parked in the slope pub, got some delicious local soups and a hot chocolate and enjoyed the view and local music until it was time to go back. We were also thinking about renting a bobsled, but the timing was wrong, so maybe next time. When we arrived at our village, it was already getting dark, and we still had a 20-minute walk through the woods. Luckily, we had a flashlight app and made it safely to the cabin without meeting a bear. It was a bit cloudier today, but the snow was still melting. After our breakfast, while watching a fun and cute little squirrel, we didn't resist a little walk to the next town. But we better take it easier today. I'm still recovering and yesterday I quite exhausted myself. It was only about two miles across the woods into the Tatranská Lomnice, which we decided to explore today. The wind was a bit harsh, but we had a good winter clothes and the sun was bright, so it didn't bother us at all. Such a peaceful and enjoyable walk. In the town, we walked through the center by the restaurant, train station, food store and info point and dropped into an unusual cafe with large collection of lovely dolls. There, we enjoyed hot chocolate and decadent cakes. On our way back, we took a shortcut through the thickets of the trees and quite unexpectedly ended up at the observatory, which was unfortunately closed. After another big day trip, I needed a timeout. Luckily, there is a fantastic wellness just next to our cabin with a heated pool jacuzzis and saunas. Could it be any better? We decided the day four would be a lazy day that started with a French toast breakfast and a game of dice. When we got tired of the games and the time was up, we took a lazy drive 
for a lazy lunch and a popular local restaurant, Stara Mama. We tasted various specialties there, topped with coffee and dessert, of course, and we spent the rest of the day enjoying a warm fireplace and binge-watching the complete Wednesday TV series. We almost missed our train today, though we were not alone, it seems. The morning was so beautiful, we impulsively decided to go sightseeing and took a ride up to Štrbske pleso. The scenery was magical, but it was obvious that it was going to be very windy. The famous Štrbske pleso lake was a great start for our sightseeing walk. The wind was ferocious though, and I don't know what I would have done without my cozy furry jacket. It also turned yesterday's slush into a sheet of ice, so the walk became somewhat challenging. It took me a while to realize, with a big disappointment, that the big white field on the side was the lake. We enjoyed the walk, but it was a bit bland and too crowded. So my mom got the brilliant idea to see the Skok waterfall. The color marks on the trees make it easy to navigate here. So around one o'clock, we hit the yellow one towards the mountains. We went through the woods and white plains, across the streams and around the rocks, and forgot the time for a while. An hour later we started to be impatient. Surely we should have been at the waterfall by now, or not? Are we going all the way up the mountain? us almost two hours to reach the waterfall under these conditions. And if there hadn't been a big sign that prohibited crossing the mountain pass in the winter, we would have passed it. It was all frozen and covered in snow. The view down the mountain was spectacular though. The late sun was casting long shadows, the wind was dusting the plains with snow, and it was much quicker to roll down the hill. In less than an hour and a half, we were already sitting in a cozy cafe, down by the train station, enjoying a cup of hot chocolate and some crepes. By the time we got on the train, the sky was already turning colors. And when we got to our village, it was pitch black. So we stumbled back to the cabin with our phone lights through the woods again. After a little morning exercise and a walk to Tatranská Lomnice, we decided to see one of the iconic Tatra hotels, the Grand Hotel Praha. It was built in 1905 as a hotel palace for curative stays of aristocratic families of that time. With its exclusive outdoor swimming pool, 108 rooms, 15 apartments and praised restaurant, it is a real jewel of the High Tatra Mountains worth visiting. Behind the hotel, you can find a crossroad of various hike trails and remnants of the bottom aerial cable car station dating back to the 1930s. It is very sad to see it in such a decayed condition after almost a century of fame. I can easily imagine a stylish restaurant or cafe there. After a tiring walk, 
we collapsed in another cafe down by the train station. And since I was really exhausted today, my sister picked us up there and drove us back to the cabin. There, we just turned around and went straight to a relaxing spa for the rest of the day. The spa offers seven various steam baths and saunas and rest area with beds and blankets and several jacuzzis with a bar. And believe it or not, we were almost the only ones in there, enjoying ourselves as much as we liked. I really didn't want to leave. This is the first snow in a week and our last day before leaving back home and the last walk into Tatranská Lomnice. What a shame! We explored the Astronomy Institute grounds close to our cabin. I don't know what they were watching, but the observatory was open on this cloudy day and it was exceptionally foggy. The numerous walks in the mountain air really helped me. Now I truly understand why these curative stays used to be prescribed by doctors for decades. Because they work. We had a quick fast food stop below the ski slopes. And I recalled the old times when we used to go skiing in the Alps. And it was time to pack up and take an early morning train back home. 